I adore summer and winter Olympic games or athletic style games and some of my favourite games of all time include Olympic Gold back on the Mega Drive and Master System where I used to button mash my way for everything and going way back in time Daily Thompson's Decathlon joystick waggling my poor little Kempston until it died in submission. But there's not been too many Olympic Games coming out recently, but there's been a couple that have come out towards uh, across like 2022. And so I wanted to review them. And the first one of those is Crazy Athletics. And the reason why this one stands out with a unique selling point is because it's a rhythm action styled Olympic game. So ticking all the boxes for me. However, it couldn't be more oddly designed if it tried. And I'm going to explain why this whole game and concept doesn't work for me. One of the main pushes that I have when I play these Olympic style games is that each mini game for each event has a slightly different control scheme. So you can have people that are really great at like button mashing to be really fast at running, but they might suck at timing. So therefore like rhythmic gymnastics might be terrible. And in Crazy Athletics, what they've done is do away with any individual control schemes and brought in a singular rhythm pattern that you can then unlock 10 versions of throughout playing the single player mode. But that single rhythmic pattern persists throughout every single event that you do. So in Crazy Athletics, you've got 100, 200, 400 meter running and then 400 hurdles. There's a couple of variations of swimming. They all follow the exact same control scheme, but so does the high jump, the long jump, the shot put and the javelin. <laughs> so you're like, hmm, I feel like there's no actual variation between what I do. The sole variation that works between all of these control schemes is, uh, and I bought this on cross buy for PS4, PS5. You have a circle button, which is known as the technical button. And this is the only change up that you have between each um, event. So, on the racing ones for swimming and running, you'll need to make sure that you press circle slightly after where it's supposed to be hit in the rhythm action shadow so that you get a perfect score. Because obviously when the gun signals, if you are slightly early, that's a false start. And then with long jump, high jump and so on and so forth, uh, you need to hit like slightly beforehand so that you don't put your foot over the white line and therefore cause a foul, like with a javelin throw. The problem with all of this is that the rhythmic patterns that are given are very, very basic. So the first one for the first like few levels, and you'll have to unlock these by the way through playing single player mode, which is a 70 event campaign. With the idea being that you start off as like a club level athlete and get quicker and then go into the Olympics, but there's no story behind it. It's just like an event going through a map, really, really soulless. Um, but you start off with the first thing, which is just X, 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 then it will be X, press and hold X, release X, X, press and hold X, release X, then it will be like X square X, X square X, then it will be like triangle square X, triangle square X, triangle square X, and that's it. But when you're doing that across all of the um, <laughs> events, they all just bleed into one. And there's no rhyme or reason, and there's no correlation between what's going on on the screen and what you're pressing in, so it feels really odd. The other thing is that this is supposed to be a rhythm action game, and whilst all of your like speed is contributed to how close and far away you are from like uh, hitting that central rhythm, it doesn't actually correspond with any of the music going on in the background. This game made a big shout that it's got a huge indie soundtrack. You'll only ever hear the first riff, verse, and maybe part of the first chorus for every single song that you hear repeatedly over and over again. It auto selects from about the same 10 songs always. So you have to go in and like actively select a new song to hear it, but you'll only hear it for about 45 seconds because that's about how long every event lasts. So you'll get very familiar with the first couple of riffs for a few songs and that'll be it. The other issue that I had is that because it's trying to auto adjust where, uh, particularly with jumping and throwing, this is an issue. Um, it's trying to auto adjust how good your throw is mid throw because you're still doing the rhythm element. So if you then miss a couple like late on in a throw, it's going to come down really sharp. But on the PS4 version, it can't take the rendering of that. And so it glitches out the UI really really annoying and frustrating when that's the sole thing that's making sure that you get a good score <laughs> i found this game utterly bizarre yes you've got one to four players in local multiplayer why would you though 
um, because everything feels very monotonous and samesy, and it all just bleeds in together. And whilst I like the idea of making an Olympic Games event quite rhythm actiony, and if I go back to like the ESPN games on the PS1 and PS2, they always had like rhythmic gymnastics, like Dance Dance Revolution, and that works really, really well. But the beauty of that was that each thing had its own individual chart. And if I go back to like even the Tokyo 2020 games that came out on PS4, which I think is actually a pretty decent game, like every event has its own unique control scheme. And that's the whole point. And by doing away with that, Crazy Athletics just becomes a mindless, very basic, aimed at children rhythm game with no real rhythm to the music that you're doing or anything that's on the screen. So I cannot recommend this at all. Really, really odd. The only thing I would say is, so I bought this on PS4, PS5 cross buy. I was silly to do so because the Steam version comes with a downloadable soundtrack with all of the songs on. And the songs are actually really, really good. And probably like I've seen this game at like 75% off. I'm sure most of those songs are probably actually publicly accessible and available because I see them pop up in other games as well. But if you want them as like MP3 downloads, that's a pretty chunky 100 song soundtrack for a couple of quid. And there's some proper good indie rock bangers in there. <laughs> so that would be my sole recommendation. Don't play the game, just buy the soundtrack. <laughs> Written review over on highplanegames.com coming soon. Stay clear of this one. Hopefully I've got some other Olympic treasures coming your way in the coming weeks. Bye bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.